Howdy there, Isaac here. Today we'll be continuing Izuku Uchiha's story. The light goal for this video will be 10. Once we reach that, the next part will come out. On to the narration. Last time, Izuku had unlocked his Sharingan and vowed vengeance on his seemingly neglectful father. This edgier Izuku would end up with far less friends, though he was acquainted with Ojiro and Ida since he had studied their fighting styles and had given them tips on how to fight better. He had also shown a proficiency with Genjutsu, or the use of illusions. We left off with Izuku using Genjutsu to win the student battle simulation training, which completely enraged Bakugo. We continue the story now. Izuku, after releasing the Genjutsu on Bakugo, would proceed to fall over onto his hands and knees, Using such an advanced Genjutsu on Bakugo had really drained him. He would have to be careful using Genjutsu like that in the future. Ochako would walk over to him, checking up on the young Uchiha. Izuku would simply say that he was exhausted from running around the battlefield, keeping his illusionary secret from her. All Might would enter the battlefield, proceeding to talk to the bombastic blonde. Bakugo wouldn't be freaking out as badly as in canon since he did beat up Izuku pretty badly and the Uchiha didn't have the overwhelming power of one for all, though Bakugo was still clenching his fists and growling in anger. Despite things being different, he did end up losing to that damn nerd. Bakugo was supposed to be the best, and certainly was supposed to be better than Deku, he was told so all his life, and yet the nerd came in and beat him, even laughing in his face beforehand. This was absolutely unacceptable. Bakugo had even trained in order to beat those red eyes of his. He'd just have to train harder. Try to think of something different to beat that damn nerd. All Might would tap Bakugo on the shoulder to get his attention and tell him that they should review the fight in order to take away something from it. All Might would say similar things to all of the other students, and all of them would comply, with Izuku lagging behind everyone due to his exhaustion. After reviewing the fight, with Momo stepping in as usual, both Bakugo and Izuku would be branded as irresponsibly reckless, though Izuku is seen as less reckless than Bakugo here. During the rest of the fights, Bakugo walks off, with Izuku not following, since he really could care less about his childhood bully. He did wonder about the blonde, but would quickly rid his thoughts of any concern for someone who had bullied him. During the rest of the fights, Izuku would intermittently turn on his Sharingan to read and copy the moves of other fighters. Sure, he didn't have their quirks, but he could still use most of their moves, only to less effect. Izuku learns about his classmates' quirks, as well as documenting a bit about their fighting styles. He would, of course, be upset he didn't get to see Ojiro fight, but that match would bring Todoroki into his sights. Another strong fighter with a flashy quirk. Izuku wondered who would win in a fight, Bakugo or Todoroki. Thoughts for another time, perhaps. The rest of the day would go by, no All Might visiting Izuku, or Izuku spilling beans to Bakugo. The night, however, is where some interesting things would happen. Izuku would look up video after video regarding both heroes and villains. First off, he would do as much research on Aizawa as possible, trying to watch videos in order to copy his fighting style, though most of the videos were from far away and grainy. Izuku would do the same with other heroes who relied on good fighting techniques, even copying from an interesting criminal. Apparently this person was a hero killer, appearing in some grainy security camera footage on a shady website. Either way, he got the job done and was apparently a good fighter. Izuku did think that killing heroes was detestable, but if he could learn to fight as well as the hero killer, he could use it for good. That was how the Uchiha would justify it, that you could learn good things even from bad people. 
The next day would go much the same way as in canon, only this time Momo would be voted in as president, with Ida being voted in as vice president. Why? Well, nothing's changed here for Momo, but Izuku isn't as popular. He did, however, like the analytical mind of Momo and the strict adherence to rules that Ida had. Izuku didn't agree with every single law, but if everyone followed the rules like Ida, there wouldn't be as much evil in the world. If only everyone played their roles correctly. Ochaka would vote for Ida since she wasn't really friends with Izuku. Either way, Ida would show his worthiness of being vice president during the freakout at UA, like in the anime. I think this would actually cause Momo to make him the class president. We know she's self-conscious of her abilities, since we see her question herself later on in the anime, and her seeing Ida display his ability to lead would cause her to rethink their positions. Besides, they would still basically have the same roles, with both being voted in by the class, so it wasn't that big a deal. Though this would cause Momo to reevaluate what she brought to the table and to try and be better in the future. The trip to USJ would go down much the same as in canon, with All Might still being late. Now, I do have to clarify something here. All Might's time limit has decreased similarly as in canon, but his strength hasn't. He isn't as weak since he still has one for all, but he definitely isn't in his prime either. This is a pretty important change, one which will have some pretty interesting ramifications. Anyways, the villains would end up invading USJ, with Aizawa still fighting off the jabroni villains. Izuku would quickly activate his Sharingan, taking advantage of the opportunity to copy Aizawa's fighting. This was pretty amazing, getting the chance to see Aizawa fight up close and personal? This was way better than any video, and far clearer. Ida would order Izuku to hurry up and leave with the rest of the class, and after a few seconds, Izuku would turn around and leave. He had gotten enough out of Aizawa. Kurogiri would have different plans for the class, however. The big old mist monster would end up spreading the students all around the training center. However, Izuku would be teleported to a different location. He would end up in the landslide zone, with Todoroki being teleported to the shipwreck zone. Before anyone writes an angry comment, let me explain. The villains had no idea what their quirks were, and simply teleported the students at random, so it's not a stretch to have Izuku sent to a different zone. Either way, we'd see Todoroki instantly freeze the water around the ship, only to then interrogate the villains like in canon. Izuku, however, would end up in a much more dangerous position. All alone, without any items or anywhere to hide, the young Uchiha stood against a small army of villains. Izuku activated the Sharingan as the villains closed in, instantly reading their moves. Izuku would disappear in a crowd of villains only for him to burst out, jumping high into the air like Aizawa would. The Uchiha would then slam his fist downwards into one of the villains before carving a path in their ranks. Yes, Izuku isn't as strong as Bakugo or Todoroki, but he has versatility and speed on his side. Besides, he has the ability to predict the enemy's movements, something that nobody else has. It would take a few minutes, but Izuku would be left standing victorious over the Jabroni villains. Unfortunately, he was already tired and his fists were bruised and bloody from the encounter. The Uchiha would run over to where the villains were, only to see All Might and the villains fighting. Izuku had arrived a little earlier than Bakugo and Kirishima, but later than Todoroki. Now, let's go over what had happened with Todoroki. Aizawa had been crushed like in canon, unfortunately though not as badly due to the intervention of Todoroki. Unlike in canon, Todoroki didn't just watch and would step in to freeze Nomu. Ida would still end up escaping and Kurogiri would intervene and save Nomu, as well as inform Shigaraki of the student's escape. Luckily for Todoroki, All Might would appear before Nomu would crush him. 
This All Might, being stronger, would severely hurt Shigaraki, as well as actually knock back Nomu. All Might would make the students retreat with Aizawa, and Todoroki would completely leave it up to All Might. He believed in the number one hero, knowing not of his secret time limit. All Might was slightly weaker, but nowhere near how weak he was in the anime, so he was pretty confident. Izuku, upon arriving on the scene, would quickly activate his Sharingan, trying to read All Might's moves. But because of the symbol's pure speed, it was difficult. All Might would still end up trying to suplex Nomu, and still fall into the villain's trap. But this time, with no Todoroki to save him. Izuku looked from All Might to the Warp Gate villain. There was only one thing he could think to do. Izuku would run forward, screaming and yelling at the villain. Kurogiri would warp in front of Izuku, which was just what the Uchiha wanted. Izuku looked into Kurogiri's eyes and cast another perfect Genjutsu, causing Kurogiri's warp gate to come undone, inadvertently cutting Nomu in half and freeing All Might. Bakugo and Kirishima would come in, with a blonde pinning Kurogiri, causing him pain and breaking Izuku's Genjutsu which he would notice. Kurogiri would be very confused as to what just happened, with Izuku being confused as to how his genjutsu was broken. All Might would break free of Nomu's grasp before taking a couple steps back to recover. At this point, Todoroki would notice what was happening back on the battlefield. He'd tell Su and Mineta to carry Aizawa on. The two would keep walking, However, unlike Izuku, Todoroki would watch the events playing out, conflicted on if he should intervene. Back on the battlefield, Shigaraki would begin to get a little frustrated and order Nomu to get Kurogiri back. Nomu would crawl forward, his legs slowly regenerating back. All Might and the other students would freeze up from seeing such a horrific sight, giving Nomu enough time to leap forward. All Might would get in the way of Nomu's fist, though since he had frozen up, this time All Might didn't have time to block. All Might would be sent flying into a nearby wall, taking a little more damage than he did in the anime. The symbol piece would ask how Nomu could use full force against a kid, to which Shigaraki would gladly clap back. Oh, but it's okay for a hero to use full force against a villain? That guy with the freeze quirk would have had no problem killing me via hypothermia. That pisses me off. Why do you get to dictate which violent actions are good or evil, heroic or villainous? Symbol of peace, ha. Huh. You're just a government-sponsored instrument of violence. Violence only breeds more violence, All Might. The world will know that once you're dead. All Might would quickly call Shigaraki out on his speech, saying that the villain was trying to make himself sound noble, when he was only doing these deeds for his own pleasure. Izuku was listening to Shigaraki's speech and was displeased with the villain. He agreed on what Shigaraki was saying, it was all kind of true. However, Shigaraki was someone who didn't actually believe in this ideology. Izuku looked to each of the three villains. He could momentarily put all three of them in a genjutsu, thus allowing All Might to capture him, but he was running out of chakra, or energy. Unfortunately for the students, All Might wasn't as pumped up as in canon. His hero spear was fading, just like how he was in episode 1, since Izuku never inspired him to go plus ultra. This meant All Might would fight Nomu to a standstill instead of beating him outright. This would lead to Izuku getting a few good moves from All Might, only for him to see something very peculiar with his Sharingan. As All Might pushed himself, his timer was being drained quicker than in canon. Luckily for him, a good amount of smoke surrounded his body, masking his transformation into Small Might. Well, it masked it from everyone but Izuku, since he could see the chakra outline of Small Might. Nomu would go to punch All Might's head, only to realize there was nothing there. 
Nomu would look around, confused as to what had just happened. Shigaraki and the students would also be confused, though the latter would assume All Might had escaped or was hiding in order to do a sneak attack. Shigaraki would begin to scratch his neck in frustration, trying to think of a way to lure out the number one hero. All Might was hiding in the smoke around him, hoping that the other heroes would arrive soon, cursing himself for letting himself run out of time that morning. Shigaraki looked around, his eyes narrowing on the students. Nomu, kill those students. Maybe that'll make All Might come back out. All the students would step back in a state of shock, even Izuku. Nomu would, without hesitation, charge the children. The only person who could even perceive the beast's movements was Izuku, but only barely. The young Uchiha knew he had to do something, that he had to put Nomu under some sort of genjutsu. Izuku would quickly yell out to Nomu while running forward to attack him. Nomu would look towards Izuku and fall under the genjutsu, only for it to instantly be broken. How? How could he break out of it by himself? In a split second, Izuku was being punched down onto the ground by Nomu. The enormous amount of pain caused him to forget about Nomu breaking his genjutsu. Izuku hit the ground so hard that his body bounced back up a few feet off the ground. Nomu would grab onto Izuku's arm, snapping it like a twig, before slamming Izuku back into the ground. While the Uchiha was being tortured, All Might watched on in frustration, feeling like an utterly useless teacher and hero. Bakugo and Kirishima were left horrified and unable to even speak. The only person who was even remotely able to do anything was Todoroki, who would end up freezing Nomu. Well, at least freezing half of his body, like in the anime. Izuku, who was quickly losing consciousness, would look over towards where Small Might was. Where was his teacher? Why would he leave his students to die? Where was the hero who had previously saved a hundred people in only a few seconds? Right then, as Izuku was crying from fear and hopelessness, he saw him. Small Might was so preoccupied with Izuku's situation and his own uselessness that he had failed to notice the smoke around himself dissipating. Izuku's eyes would widen as a Sharingan deactivated. Ahead of him was a shriveled up All Might. A hero he had once looked up to, now looking frail and hopeless. One who was unable to save his own student. That was utterly pathetic. Izuku would fall unconscious due to the severe state of shock he was in. Just as he had seen Small Might, so too had Shigaraki. The villain was in disbelief, but quickly looking over the frail hero, he realized that it was the real deal. Shigaraki stopped Nomu from killing the rest of the kids instead focusing the beast's attention back onto the hero. The three villains converged on the symbol of peace, who simply accepted his fate at this point. He had failed as a hero, failed his colleagues, and even failed his own students. All Might's only thought was, sorry Aizawa, 13, class 1A, and most of all, sorry young Uchiha. But before Shigaraki could lay a hand on the hero, a bullet would pierce his hand, and then another would hit his shoulder, and yet another his knee. He would look to see the heroes of UA standing tall near the USJ entrance. Like in the anime, Kurogiri would warp Shigaraki away, but this time he'd also warp away Nomu. Cementos would quickly come in and wall off Small Might, but the damage would already be done. Yue's Class 1A had seen a side of All Might that the hero community had wanted to keep a secret. The ramifications of this battle were terrifying to think of, but right now, there were more pressing matters. Izuku and Aizawa would immediately be sent to the hospital, with the students all being sworn to secrecy. 
the students would happily keep All Might's secret, well, except the traitor, um, <clears throat> All Might would be ashamed, so much so that he was unable to even face his own students. The symbol would walk away from the battlefield, hiding himself with a blanket, not to be seen by anyone else for the rest of the day. The rest of the students would be shipped off to UA, where everyone, especially Bakugo, Todoroki, and Kirishima would feel horrible. The duo of Bakugo and Kirishima would curse themselves for not being able to act. Todoroki cursed himself for being too slow. Bakugo was feeling the worst. He was supposed to be someone great, yet he couldn't even save a fellow student. Izuku had ran forward and saved both All Might and Bakugo himself. How could Bakugo be okay with that? The blonde would slam his fist on his desk before running off to the bathroom. He was teary-eyed and couldn't bear to let anyone see. How could he be okay with being so useless? The next day, Izuku would wake up in his bed, freaking out due to a nightmare. He had remembered his bones snapping like twigs, the crunch of his occipital lobe and cheekbones as his face was smashed against the concrete. All the memories kept replaying in his head. Most of these memories left Izuku afraid, but there was one memory that left him enraged. One that made his blood boil so hot that the pain in his arm, his chest, and face melted away. It was the memory of All Might staring on helplessly as Izuku was being killed. Once again, someone who Izuku trusted and admired had failed him. Izuku's eyes turned scarlet, his fists clenched tightly around the sheets. Apparently, not even heroes could be trusted. Izuku couldn't rely on anyone else. He was too weak to do anything, but if even the number one couldn't, then Izuku would just have to get stronger. Izuku would get stronger, strong enough to make a change, to fix such a rotten society. He'd do it, he'd fix this world no matter what happened or who got in his way. This wretched world would be fixed. But that fam is where we'll be leaving it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to like it and maybe even subscribe. Anyways, that's it for now. Bye bye.